He's pulled the shirt on, scored the goals. Andy Campbell on the red. This is the red. Oh, matey, 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 matey. What do we have to do? Oh, I'm, I'm deflated. I'm deflated. Yeah, me too. Uh, I, obviously, after our interview last night, I was uh, I was quietly confident, so really was I. confident, and. and I couldn't see anything but a, a comfortable victory. Um, and then when it started, it started so well. I know we'll pick the bones out of it, but it started probably too well in the end, and I think it uh, we flattered to deceive. Can it? Can it? Can a game start too well? Well, not if you're talking about the Preston game. The Preston game we started exactly the same, and yep. we continued um, on the front foot. But yesterday, I think we, I think we, for me, it, it seemed as though we, we expected it to happen, and mm. we expected the game to be easy, and it was easy, but. You have to earn that right to be easy. You're going to need to get that second goal, and that second goal becomes a third goal. And when you don't get that second goal, and you miss and a chance that we missed around the 20th minute mark, 90th minute mark, we um, we didn't give ourselves an opportunity, and we uh, we lose the game. Yeah, yeah. Had uh, and it's all ifs, buts, and maybe's football, yeah. isn't it? You know, had Izzy has stuck that one away on 19 minutes, two nil up, less than yeah. 20 minutes on the watch, that would have been game over, wouldn't it? Because yeah. they they were on a bad run as well. They yeah. came into it with two. Two straight defeats. Yeah, I think so. And they, would, I think, they wouldn't have come back, would they? No, hundred percent. And I think, uh, and I think, if they're honest, I think the the manager, their manager, Rizini, I think he got his tactics probably wrong in the first first little bit. But I think at half time he regrouped his players and they, they came out like a different side, you know. And I think um, they like to keep the ball as well, and they've got a they've got a fresh approach. And and um, it's just really disappointing that we couldn't probably capitalise on a good start that we had because you can win the game in the first half and you can just cut through the second half, see the game out, but. Mm. When you don't get that second killer goal, um, you know it's really frustrating because they were there for the taking, and the league would have looked a hell of a lot brighter. They were not a great team, were they? No, listen, the teams in and around us, I don't think are great. The workmen like um, they seem to get the job done. At the minute, we don't get the job done, and we talked. I know we, we spoke off air there about about the goals that we scored last year and how entertaining we are. We we haven't got that spark, uh, and when we're still letting goals in, we look susceptible um, to, to giving chances or giving goals away. Then. It's really quite worrying because there's no positive in terms of going forward at the minute because we're not scoring enough goals, creating enough chances. We, we, we're talking about one chance, one good chance. Last year, we'd probably create three, four, five good chances mm. and, and we, we can probably afford to miss one or two, where now we can't afford to miss any. That's probably the, the most worrying part. It is Andy Campbell, uh, former Borough striker, live on the red. Uh, also on uh, Facebook Live as well and YouTube, you can get your comments in. Uh, into the radio studio via WhatsApp, 0330-043-2002. That's 0330-043-2002. That's one way you can do it. You can do it on Facebook Live, uh, just, you know, along the side. I've got a point to the right side here. I think it's that side. Uh, I'm, I might be reversed here, whatever it is. Get your comments in, uh, or below, if you're doing it that way, uh, on the page. Then uh, <laughs> I can see myself on the screen doing all this. Uh, you can get your comments in there. We've, uh, we've posed the question on Facebook Live tonight. Will we uh, still get, uh, will we still secure a playoff spot? And we'll talk about that. Uh, this season um, or on YouTube you can do that and uh, Rob is all over it like a rash downstairs as always and uh, he'll be firing them through to us uh, when they come in on uh, on YouTube because you know we've got the new cameras in now so studios start to look a bit tidier um, last time we were on temporary ones big cameras on tripods it's not the grey yeah, the yeah. grey beard out now though well, we'll, yeah, we'll, too we'll, sharp we'll play with the colour scheme on the cameras <laughs> mate so, so, so I've got nice black hair and, and well there you go we'll give you a nice uh, what colour ginger beard anything just and, and some hair would be nice ok that's fine that's fine so you can get your comments in that way uh, look let's get started I did ask the question and apologies for those on uh, on, on YouTube and Facebook Live where apparently there's a, a bit of audio missing at the start um well, we asked that question. I thought I'd put it out there. We'll uh, we'll take your comments throughout the show about will we still make the playoffs this season? Um, Anthony, thanks, mate. A definitive yes. But that's great. Uh, Ian, uh, he's our Darlington fan, saying good evening, everybody, and uh, Merry Christmas. Same to you, mate. Uh, <laughs> and he's asking the question because we've asked about the borough. Will Darlow uh, avoid going down? Oh, I thought uh, he was going to ask if they were going to get the playoffs. No, no, no. no. <laughs> will, will we avoid going down? And Anthony's come straight on the back and went, no. <laughs> like it. So uh, it's not just Cam's Red Army. No. It's the uh, the black and white one black of Darlow as well, yeah. Uh, I mean, and we can do Blue and White of Hartlepool if you want. Turn it into whatever you want. Um, oh, hang on. The, the comments are still... The, the comments are still uh, flying in and uh, Anthony said uh, are the injuries costing us we'll come on to that as well so look we've got reaction from Ipswich we've got reaction from 
last night against Hull City. Uh, and we've also got to look ahead to the weekend as well. Yeah. So there's an awful lot to get through. Um, I'll try and do it a bit chronologically here, mate. Um, Ipswich. Yeah. I've got to be honest. When I was watching the game, even though they did us, I was looking at them thinking, a fully fit Borough squad would have done them. Yeah. We'd have certainly given a run for the money. Yeah. I think we showed them a little bit too, too much respect. Um, I looked at the squad on paper. I looked at the team and they didn't, they don't, have many many stars they've got workmen like players they've got listen the 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 very good football in their own right I, I totally get that but they've they've got a philosophy and a way of playing which the manager demands um he's obviously a very very good coach he obviously mm. works a lot on the training ground you can see they're very well drilled and um Chaplin is a, a big big player for them um he caused us a host of problems and obviously got the got, got his goal it, they just they just seem to, to to do enough, you know. I, I know against Watford in the week, they, yeah. they went one down, turned it around at two one. I think once they were ahead, I can't see them losing the game. Um, whereas we've gone ahead probably in the last four or five games at the minute, and we've lost yeah. points or yeah. lost games. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's where you need to, you know. I mean, we talked at the start of the season about uh, we need to score the first goal. We can't give you the first goal away at the minute. We we're getting the first goal, but we're still losing games. So it's. It's, and it's that's the difference with last season. Wasn't yeah, it? If huge. we got the first goal, we knew we had more goals to come. Ah, 100%. Yeah. We, we'd, we'd create chances. We'd score more goals than one. I think in the minute we're thinking one goal's enough or, 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 or second, goal, second goal will come. At the minute those chances aren't coming and the goals aren't coming and it's maybe a little bit of composure. Latte lasts on one of those streaks and forms the first centre-forward, which is brilliant, but where are other goals coming from? Mm. You know what I mean? Are we, getting, uh, are we getting a defender coming in with five, ten goals a season? Are we getting a number 10 or a midfielder coming in with goals? Sam Greenwood's popped up with important goals. Of course he has, but is it enough? Has he scored enough goals? You know what I mean? Riley's obviously injured. The can't, as I has scored his, his goals in one game. He missed a really good chance. It's it's so important that the goals are spread around. We can't focus on one player. You know what I mean? Like we talked last year about uh, the goals that Akpom scored, and but other players followed suit as well. They scored goals, and, and goals came from various various avenues. McGree, Archer, um, Ramsey. Other people scored goals and helped us out. At the minute, we we, we look very one dimensional, which is quite alarming. And are we one-dimensional because of the injuries? Um, yes, I think yes and no. I think we're one-dimensional because we, we're lacking options. Um, obviously, Josh Corbyn's picked up an injury. Um, there's a very of it. I don't think we know. Um, there are a, a few rumours coming out that it could be this, it could be that. But um, I'd, I'd like to see a little bit of a, a versatility. Maybe he's, maybe he's playing both up front because I think Josh would score goals with somebody in and around him. Uh, we'd create more chances of course. So I'd, like, I'd like to see Josh alongside Latte so Lath because they're so different yeah, as individuals. Fair. I mean, yeah. Josh will make an absolute nuisance of yeah. himself with the big defenders. But he'd create more chances off for someone else. Yeah, exactly. Which, for Latte which, Lath, who can run, he's got speed, he's got pace. Yeah. And I'll put, my, I'll, put my own, I'll put my own slant on it. When I played, I played up front on my own a couple of times. I hated every minute of it because I didn't get no support. I didn't get no change out of defenders. When I played up front with somebody else, I could play off them. I could work in and around them. They could take the pressure off me. I could work on the things that I wanted to work on and I think that's one thing that in 2023 and the modern day football that the formation that teams play with one up front it, it makes you one dimensional it makes defenders in control instead of being second guessed and I think um, I think sometimes you need to think a little bit differently and that's probably football in general you know if uh, mm. the teams who, are, who do things very differently have a have a big centre forward or have a couple of centre forwards up it's, uh, it's, it's very, obviously very different yeah um, we had that last year we yeah. had Archer and Akpom, yeah. whichever way around it was, yeah. you know, it was more Archer doing the running and playing in Akpom, or it was Akpom getting that ball and Archer feeding off him. We had that. We had yeah. two strikers who could play off each other. I don't think I've seen us go for that yet this season. No, I don't think we've had. Um, I don't think we've had the, the consistency. I don't think we've had the versatility. Um, you know, we've had we've had Sam Greenwood probably get a little bit higher. We've got Matt Crooks playing a little bit higher. And uh, with all due respect, we're talking a, a very different calibre of player. You know what I mean? Mm. Matt Crooks is good in his own right. He does a brilliant job for the team. But he's not the kind of player who's going to get you 10, 15 goals, which is going to be what we need to get in the playoffs, in my opinion. We need goals win games. And one goal's not enough in 2023 in, in the championship at this minute to, to win a game of football. You know, I, I talked about the Aitor Karanka style, about, about the amount of clean sheets that that Dimmy used to keep you know what I mean at the minute we don't yeah. keep clean sheets yeah. so one goal's not enough you know what I mean teams are scoring against us it's knocking us back it's ruining our confidence mm. and then we're susceptible at the minute to go and get lose that second goal we did it against Plymouth we did it against Bristol City we did it against Leeds United and we did it again um, against um, Hull City yep. 
last night. So we need to make sure that the one goal doesn't turn into two. You know, because one point last night it would have, wouldn't have been a disaster, but it would have been a, a very very strong point against a team in the round. You wouldn't have dropped um, dropped the, yeah. the points. Yeah, and I was saying that, and when we were chatting uh, yeah. before the game, when we were doing match day live from the Six Medals Pub with the Borough fans <laughs> and the Hull fans. Uh, funnily enough, every Hull fan I spoke to predicted two one Hull City win. What did they know? Um, you know, we were saying that when, and I think I was saying that it's a game we can't afford to lose yeah. because of where they are around us and they were three points ahead yeah. uh, and if we could keep them within three points and we move on to the next game there's always that chance that yeah. come January get a few more faces and get a few injuries um, back we could stand that chance of having a run but jeez oh, yeah, well, it was a real kick wasn't it I think I think the worst was Cardiff lost against Birmingham which is, was a shock result mm. Blackburn win Southampton won Leeds everyone seems to be making that gap a little Sunderland you know that the, the gap gets bigger um, and it, it's going to be a little bit more difficult we've still got all these teams to play remember you know what I mean it's not and it grows when you're not winning games when you're not on a winning streak that, does, that yeah. gap goes and there's grows. some big games coming up you know yeah. next Swansea at the weekend it's going to be a really really difficult game forget league tables I don't fancy that forget league tables it's a long trip that's for one um, you're, going the, you're going into the Liberty Stadium you're playing against a side who has one, pl- one way of playing mm. they will keep the ball for long long periods of that game um, and will we change our tactics or will we match them and try and keep the ball off them it, it, listen it, it's going to be a very very difficult afternoon we haven't notoriously gone away from home and kept many clean sheets there's always a lot of goals when middle of the football club turned up to games um, and then the small matter the following midweek of the quarter final of the, of, the, of the Carabao Cup so listen Port Vale will at the minute would be rubbing their hands together it's not on telly is it um, they haven't selected ever. they've gone for the big guns yeah I think they have yeah but well, it's I'm be pleased about game. that I'm huge pleased game. about that of course huge it's going to be a huge everybody because that's what it is now we don't fancy it now no well I don't I was, I was excited three games four games ago and really looking forward to it now I'm I'm nervous because Saturday's the bigger game because mm. it's a bread and butter it's, the, it's a game that we need to pick points up from um, but then if when you win it you've got to quickly move on to it if you don't win the game on Saturday you've got to quickly move on to it and hope that players can turn, them, turn themselves around and and start looking at performance levels and trying to get over the line because it's going to be such a difficult couple of weeks I think up to Christmas now yeah yeah, it is a couple of comments coming in uh, please keep them coming in via um, WhatsApp into the radio studio the Red Studio uh, we're live across Teesside on DAB Radio Smart Speakers well the world on Smart the Speakers world. and uh, and 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 via the website and via apps uh, but DAB Radio across Teesside and Darlington all up to Bishops um, so Darlow we can talk to Darlow fans as well if you want to give us your shout 0330 043 2002 a couple of comments in from YouTube Borough fan uh, no we won't he's that question we posed I paused earlier yeah. will we make the playoffs this season Borough fan says no we won't too many losses and starting to be cut agri- uh, adrift no sign of so called better players coming back I mean that's a that's a a, a point a factor we've been asking we've been talking about for a couple of shows now yeah. are we losing too many games you can't afford to lose too many games I don't know what that magic number is going to look like you know it's I think the the more alarming thing is what we spoke about, Dave, before the show, that we spoke about um, normally you're, you're fighting for three, four places that the top two can go and run away with it and the playoff place is up for grabs. The way the season's looking at the minute, Leicester, uh, Ipswich, Leeds and Southampton look like they're fighting it off for the top two and, and, and the top two playoff places as well. So then you're, you're scraping around now for two more places and it looks like there's 10, 12 teams fighting for those two holy grail places, which yeah. is just a phenomenal way of looking at it. But... You can't afford to lose against teams in around you. That's the most important thing. And we, we, unfortunately, over the last couple of weeks, we've lost some massive games against Hull, Leeds, probably more of a free one. But but now, when you probably get the free games where you can afford to lose, Swansea, you can't afford to lose it mm. because you can't afford to lose another game because we've lost three in the belt. We can't afford to lose four in the belt in the league because that would just be an absolute disaster. We're going well, back to be, where we were at the start of the season. We'd be, we'd be, yeah, exactly. We'd be in a real rut. Yeah. Uh, four straight losses, and heaven forbid if that happened. And mm. then we go into the Port Vale game and. That eternal banana is just waiting. The yeah. skin is waiting on the floor to yeah. be uh, to slip up. And on that point, Dave, I don't think we can afford then to. I think if we if we did lose at the weekend and you go and get knocked out of the cup, the season is absolutely yeah. shot to pieces overnight. It? And it's, that's that's in in in, a, in in the case of a week. So we do need to massively get things right this week. A um, few massive days ahead of recovery. Can we get anybody back? If not, the players have got to look after themselves. You know, I mean, the manager knows and trusts who he's got on the pitch. Listen, the, the team's good enough on the pitch. Mm. The team is good enough. We'd all love the, the X, Y, and Z to come back. We'd all love all the injuries to come back and, and make us stronger. 
but the players who were on the pitch they believe they're good enough because they want to play for Middles Football Club they want to play in the championship the, we know deep down that they've got ability it's, it's time to show it you know what I mean forget tiredness forget games coming thick and fast these are the games you want to play in you know pressurised games quarter final of the cup any footballer in the right mind would be looking forward to these games if I want to play on Wednesday night against Port Vale I've got to perform on Saturday yeah. it's as simple as that and those those 11 players that started the game last night against Hull City none of them you could point a finger at and say they're not championship players no, they are 100% Th- there's They've not a it. player out there you would you would yeah. question being in the side even yeah. with the horrendous injury no. situation we've got So they've been there and done it Dave yeah. they've been there and done it they wore the t-shirt they've earned the right for the reputation to be a championship if not played in the Premier League in some point of their career so you know what I mean cream always rises to the top but you've got to earn that right you've mm. got to really put the shift in you've got to put the work in and, and I think second half yesterday I don't think we we've won our battles individually collectively mm. uh, they had, they showed a little bit more quality in the right areas and at times they worked a little bit harder than us and that's criminal you yeah. know what I mean in order for a, a team shouldn't work harder than you on your home patch yeah. in front of your own crowd that's we're going we're gonna, to come back to the Borough chat in a minute I've just got to give a very hard Paddington Bear stare at Borough fan on YouTube I'm, I'm giving him a, a Paddington Bear stare now uh, simply because he's put another comment on, which is uh, Radio Dad. That's the nickname they're giving me. <laughs> Radio Dad, not much chance of you looking as sharp as a Stanley knife, even with the new cameras. Ouch. I know. Oh, that was a kick in the stones, yeah. mate. Thank you very much for that one. Love that one, yeah. Kisses uh, in your general direction, too. Um, another uh, one coming in via WhatsApp. I'm just trying to see who this is here. Let's see if I can get it. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's Cheryl. Uh, Hiya, we watched the game last night Uh, In our opinion, the first half Borough wanted it more Second half, Hull showed they wanted it more And capitalised on the fact Borough just couldn't keep hold of the ball But why is that Uh, the day? Why is is that happening? A game of two halves When you dominate the game that much in the first half You you should should have put it to bed We should have put it to bed anyway Yeah, the consistency The second half, it should be a continuity um, Of what's happened in the first half We should grow into the game even further And and dominate those kind of games You Mm. know, instead of 45 minutes It should be 60, 75 and if you're still only one to look because you've missed chance after chance after chance you hold your hands up and say we could play until Saturday and we wouldn't score but yeah. we didn't create enough we didn't do enough in, especially in the second half to, to probably get that positive result a couple, co- couple of comments coming in and please keep them coming in Facebook Live YouTube or, or the WhatsApp number which is 033 or 043 2002 uh, you can even come on the show if you want you can you know give us a shout just say ow Radio Dad Dave Andy you lot um, get me on the show I want to talk um, so just whatsapp us uh, your, your message whether it's your comment a question for Andy or whether you actually want to say ow give me a call I want to be on uh, 033 or 043 2002 couple of comments coming in on Facebook live Mark don't believe we're strong enough for the playoffs we will need a good seven or eight players in January to get anywhere near is there that much surgery needed um, I think my concern in the, in the bigger picture and I was talking to people today about it that if we do get in the playoffs with the squad that we've got, uh, even with the injuries coming back, are we good enough and strong enough to beat a Leeds United, a Southampton, um, a Leicester, um, an Ipswich Town, you know, because the the, the players that we've got um, and the way that we're playing currently, because all you can do it on, on face value, mm. we're not playing well enough. We're not we're not dominating enough games. We're not dominating games for long enough periods of time. We're not creating enough chances. We're letting goals in. So I think there's a lot of work to do. Um, do I believe we need seven players in? Probably not, because when we get the injuries back, I'd, I'd, it will make us stronger in, internally. Yeah. Um, I'd probably say we probably need at least three, minimum of three. Um, and what that looks like, I don't know. Would that be building for next year and, and having so the that, same model what Kieran Scott has? I is don't that know. a case of we need three new faces plus yeah. we need injuries yeah. then return I, I believe to support so. I believe so. I think we it's need not fresh just we need three back in from no. the treatment team. No, I think yeah. we need I think we need um, externally three players in. Yeah. If that's loan players, um, which Kim and Scott did an interview on uh, on radio recently about uh, the models changed. Mm. So is the model changed that dramatically that we're going to bring three players in or bring players in and, and on longer contracts at the same age bracket and, and we move forward and push on for next season? Hopefully. Um, he hasn't ruled out bringing loan players in, but it's got to be the right player. You know, because we need to learn from the mistakes of last year. Do we need to bring loan players in at this time and, and they do well, uh, we do well, and they go and leave and, and move on to a different club? We make players better, but we're the ones who, who suffer. You know what I mean? For me, it's, it's, we've got to move past this. You know what I mean? We've got to we've got to look after number one, look after this football club. Um, and for me, it's the model, I like the model that we've got now, but we can't change the model halfway during the season. It's, it's not broken. Yeah. The model was broke at the start, but we, we changed it. Um, and I think it, we, we, we saw a little bit more positives once the players had bedded, bedded in and settled down but 
um, I do believe we need some reinforcements. And look, let's not take any way, anything away from Michael because mm. he has now got a horrendous injury situation. Yeah. Probably the point. worst he'll ever, he'll, ever, he'll ever get in his career, potentially. Yeah. And, and it's not as if we're a Manchester United, a Liverpool, or Man City where you can have strength and depth yeah. in, in terms of numbers and quality. You know, we're not there. We're in the championship. We're a championship club. Yeah. Um, and to have 10 regular first teamers out at the same time is huge yeah. it, it, it and some of the quality as well you know yeah. what I mean like the, the big players who've turned up on big moments for this football club you know so those players defensively and offensively it, it causes problems for the, the manager the coaching staff um, the supporters because we start to, we start to worry start to concern it's the players who are left behind uh, who are the ones who need to step up and and show their worth because that's when you get a, a gem who hasn't played and people thought they were they were probably finished at the club these are the lads who, who, who can show that, that that they want to be here long term and they deserve an opportunity because when new players come back if they're not shown the worth they'll just go back where they were or, or move clubs and that, that's, the, that's for, for me the biggest shame yeah, uh, get your comments in to Andy Andy Campbell former Borough striker you can do it live on the Reds radio or Facebook live or YouTube because we're streaming the show on there too uh, YouTube just seems a, a platform for having a dig at me Borough fans on there he sent another one uh, love the stare you looked as hard as a dinosaur <laughs> with a laughing face appreciate that one so if you want to really have a dig at us then uh, I think it seems to be YouTube uh, we love you really mate um, or on the WhatsApp 0330043 that's 0330 Four three, two thousand and two. Um, let's have a look at Facebook Live. Plenty of comments on here. We need to get through them. Ian's saying, "Do you think the Championship uh, is much harder this season with the teams that have gone down from the Premiership and the teams that have come up from League One? Is it a harder league as than some years you've seen?" Um, I think I think it's harder because I think the, the Premier League players who are coming down look at look at Leicester's squad, look at Leicester's midfield. You know, what I mean, alone is just is is phenomenal. I think the team do coming up in League One. Uh, the gulf's not as dramatic and as big as been investment people, in Ipswich. What people think, yeah. yeah. Um, I think with the parachute money and the Premier League money, teams can still invest and they can still um, have that kind of uh, progression for the next two or three seasons. And the teams like Hull um, and the teams like Preston, who were who were always in those kind of areas, and Sunderland and and ourselves, or put us or put us in the bracket. They're always in around those areas, so you, you've you've got this probably the similar amount of sides, eight to ten to twelve sides who were mm. who were focusing for six places, yeah, or for four places. And every year, next season is going to be the same. You're going to get three teams coming down from the Premier League. It's going to get harder and harder to get out of it, um, and the longer, the, the longer, the longer with the parachute money. Oh. And I think I think next year probably, in my opinion, may not be as as difficult with Luton going down. It's probably a I don't think Luton will fly back up, in my opinion. But I think they're a team that probably would have to yeah. sell. Yeah, it's hundred percent. I think yeah. their their model is going to be very different to everyone else's. But the the clubs who came down last year, the the big football clubs who took one step back to potentially go go forward, and that was mm. probably the long term and the short term plan anyway. So and they're showing their their worth by doing so. But we need to make sure that we we have the right tools in our armour to get where we need to be. We need to get in the playoffs again. Mm. To show progression as a football club, we need to be in the playoffs. Should we be there right now? We, we had too much of a bad start in order to be be there right now, but we need to make sure we don't lose enough games, which is going to shoot ourselves in the We keep saying that, don't we? We keep saying. How many We talked about the magic number last yeah. week. We had another, we've had another couple. Um, we've got another tough one Saturday. We've got some tough ones coming up for Christmas. After New Year, we've got some predominantly easy ones but then you've got Sunderland thrown in in the middle of them it's it's going to be a phenomenal period um, December and January yep. but it also could be an absolute disaster because your season could be done by the end of January well, it could be if I mean, not if, careful if we go on a and I don't want to talk negatively mm. but at the moment I don't see much positivity to, yeah. to, to hang my hopes on you know if we were to go on a losing run now uh, or pick up the odd draw here and there amongst losses Get through that period because it's yeah. a massive period. Christmas is yeah. always the best period for. I a still footballer. think our defining period is now yeah, because 100%. of the teams that we're playing. Yeah, we always said, Dave, Christmas was the was the period to win to, to win games. There's loads of games in a short space of time. Yeah, and we could get closer, if not in and around the playoffs, mm. around this Christmas period. But we if we don't get there by winning games, but if we don't and we get into mid January and we haven't picked those points up, yeah. <laughs> tough one that's why I asked the question yeah. tonight it was me who asked it not Andy mm. and you know I asked the question of do you still think we can make the playoffs because mm. I'd, I'd like to you know, use, use this programme as a bit of a sounding mm. board on what the fans are thinking mm. and we've had some comments come in actually um, and they're not positive you know Mark said Crooks is too slow Jones's decision making is awful Barlas are not anywhere near good enough at the moment to start games uh, Mohamed Ibra is a, a regular hello mate I know you like to be positive but he's saying 
It was awful last night, just and it didn't help with Carrick saying what he said after the game. He thinks it's an insult to the fans. Um, Anthony is having a pop at Barlasser. He wasn't good Barlasser yesterday. I've, and you, you have those games as players. You yeah. have off days. You know, when I was ref and I had off days. Yeah. Yeah, and I knew when I had an off day. I'm sure it's the same for you guys. If you're, if, if, you know, if you're missing them, yeah. not getting into the right spots, not, you know, trying to put the effort in, but it's just not working. I'm sure you know yourself. Yeah. Yeah, play, listen, players know, players know that, that levels aren't good enough. Players know when you played well. You don't need to be told off a manager, a coach, a supporter, your teammates if you've done well. You know for a fact, fine fact if you've done well. You know for a fine fact if you've done enough in terms of put the effort in. Um, I think today will have been a, 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 a quiet, sombre um, training ground mm. in terms of reflection and looking at themselves in the mirror and, and a couple of meetings to, to try and turn this around because we talk about things can't get worse things can get a lot worse if we're not careful uh, and you know I don't want to be negative same as what you've just said I, I want us to turn this around but I look at the games Swansea fighting for the lives down the bottom end of the table mm. you know what I mean and they're a big club good good club who play the right way and try to win football matches they're in a little bit of a transition we need to be positive we need to go into the game and we need to try and win this football match because you can't turn up for 45 minutes you know what I mean they're, they're, we've gone for 45 minutes at Bristol City the other week in the mm. second half we played well but we still lost the game we turned up on Wednesday 45 minutes we still lost the game It's we need longer periods we need to play better for longer it's not a fitness thing it can't be a fitness thing we're, we're too far into the season now 19, 20 games in you know what I mean we're, we're could be a fit. tiredness thing because he's got no other option than to play the same player game in game out potentially um, I, I, I think I think Wednesday for example for me was, was, was a case of if we'd have played five or ten minutes more in the first half, we'd have got that second goal. Yeah. You know what I mean? We had them on the ropes and they were there, they were ready for the take and they needed to get in the change room very and quick. I, I agree and with Michael. Fast. When when Carrick turned around and said he thought we played well, yeah. I'd give him that in the first 45 minutes. Yeah, 100%. But I thought we were shocking in the second yeah. 45 minutes. And yeah, I thought 100%. our passing was shocking yeah. overall. I thought our finishing was shocking. Yeah. Though Latte Laf did get on the end of one and put yeah. it away. Um, so, yeah, and I, I, I know... Mo, you're not happy about what Carrick was saying, but I, I'll give him what he said based on that. But you it's can't, an isolation. I think you can't win a game just in 45 minutes. No, you, can, well, you can. You can. You can. You yeah, can. You we've, done it, we've, done it, we've done it in the yeah. past. We've done it against against uh, Preston, but you can't do it every week. And, and had you can't do it against on 19 side. minutes. That yeah, would it's a very a different game. game. Very yeah, different game. But that. but because we didn't score, you can talk about those missed chances and, and defining moments in games. But because the defining moments are, we missed a chance on 19. We give some goals away. We give chances away, and predominantly you lose the game. Leave a man completely shot down, shot unmarked pieces. at the far post for the equaliser. Can't afford to do it. You present them with the second goal yeah. inside the penalty area mm. um, with a wayward flick. Yeah, I mean it's it was. It's too victims many, of our own. There's too many errors and too many small small it's small margins are, are, are killing us at the minute. You know what I mean? We're getting punished severely um, in the mad, the massive moments in football matches. Yeah, um, and when it, things are going against you to go against you but you've got to obviously earn that own fortune as well and, you, and your own luck and at the minute we're not earning anything we're not getting that second goal which would have potentially killed the game mm. or you draw 2-2 two, two, take a draw yeah. uh, a, a draw towards the end of the season might be a, a huge result but we're not drawing enough games we're losing or we're winning but at the minute we're losing and three on the bounce you can't afford to turn it into four yeah yeah a couple of more comments coming in we'll go YouTube uh, but our fans have been back on again and this one hasn't got anything to do with taking the make out of me that's great uh, we've only got a couple of lo losses left in us because we're now relying on other teams. I think you're dead right. Uh, and more than a couple of more losses, mate, and we're going to be in trouble. So what does that spell out for the rest of the season? And Stu's been on. Uh, we're six points off the playoffs, seven off the bottom three. Uh, we need to start looking over our shoulders to be safe, I think is the, uh, is the comment there. Um, Rye, our Rye, not our Plymouth Rye. Good eye, mate. Hang on. Do we still? I don't think we still have. I'd, I'd have played. The, I'd have played his jingle, mate. Before we, uh, hang on. Let's see if he's in there. Is he in there? He is. Let's do a bit of this and have a bit of fun. Truth live down under. It's match day live with Ryan Richters. This is the man. The that's the man. So all the way from Canberra, which is pretty soggy at the moment. He's uh, he was battling storms yesterday. God bless him. But he was on the breakfast show this morning, uh, on the Northeast Footy Breakfast Show. Uh, he's listening at the moment. Uh, his thoughts are: I think we got it awfully wrong last night. Uh, in my head, I'm thinking uh, it has to be uh, one of two things because there's no way he can believe that that was a good performance. He's uh, he's commenting on uh, Michael Carrick's. Uh, comments after the game yeah. saying you know, he was really pleased with yeah. it. I think, I think for me, Rai, I think he's probably saying one thing 
to the punters. He's probably saying another thing inside the dressing room, and I yeah. think he's trying to keep his his thoughts and he's his, trying to manage his belief. The, he's the trying to he's, he's managed yeah. he's managed yeah. it internally and externally. And I think he's trying to keep the positivity with the supporters and and try to um, to say it was good because there was there was good parts of it, mm. um, but overall it. The bigger picture is we lost the game, but internally he won't be happy. He won't be happy with the chances that we missed in the first half, which is a negative. He won't be happy with the goals he gave away in the second half, which is a negative. He won't be happy with not getting a point or losing two points, mm. which is a negative, or three points. Um, There's a lot of work to do, um, but we've got it in us. We've got a really, really good manager, but results speak for itself, and it's a results business. It's a results game. We need to be positive in terms of going into the weekend and, and trying to win a football match you live and die by them don't you you it's do unfortunately every, the listen, results are everything listen we've we've Lo- seen we've seen losing better and worse managers will he be in the job I don't know even Michael Carrick you know yeah. it's, doesn't yeah. matter who you are you know I mean there's, there's big managers who've lost their jobs because they haven't won football matches they haven't got in that holy grail of the playoffs and got promoted and you know what I mean? Listen, he's 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 very good at what he does he had an amazing season last season he's turned things around this season it looked looked a lot better in terms of position where we are but Right now, the last three games, you can you, you focus on it in isolation. It's not been good enough. Mm. 0330-043-2002 if you want to WhatsApp us via the Red Studio. Uh, I'm live on DAB Radio across Teesside. Uh, you can uh, get your comments in via YouTube. Uh, we're live on that at the moment and also via Facebook Live. And let's dig into a couple of these Facebook Live ones. Hang on, just get a couple of messages off my screen. Blocking Steve said, we had enough chances last night to have put Hull City away before they equalised. Rather than saying we were rubbish, we were just not putting the chances away uh, that, are, that are being presented to us. On to Swansea, up the borough. I'll mm. just shorten that one. Uh, Ian, uh, I'm surprised that no one has gone in for uh, the striker Mullin from Wrexham and uh, Longstaff from Notts County. Um uh, Every time you mention latte, latte, I fancy a coffee, is Ian's. Yeah, uh, I think I do, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. I do. Go and get one, mate. I'll just I talk think, myself. I, I can, think, I can do that. I think that. On, those, on those two players, Mullin um, and Longstaff, I, I thought that the Borough fans, would, are those are the kind of players who would excite you being brought in. Are they the kind of players who we expect would score the goals to get us in the playoffs? Listen, mm. they're doing well for their football clubs. They're doing well at the levels that they're playing at. But is the jump too much in a short space of time? Are we going to expect great things from them straight away are, are we are we wanting a player to come down from the Premier League yeah. who's got the experience are we looking at a championship player who's who's done it wore that t-shirt so to speak or an international class who's done it in a different country you know I, I throw it out to people you know because the 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 skill of a centre forward who can find the net mm. you know what I mean are we putting too much pressure on a Macaulay Longstaff are we too much putting too much pressure on a Paul Mullen you know that these kind of players have done brilliant for their football clubs they've got them out there the National League they've got them into League 2 but we're talking about League Two, and I'm not being disrespectful here. But I'm talking about the Championship. There is a big difference. We're isn't talking it? about the Championship to the Premier League. You know, if they're ready to play in the Premier League now, then that's different because we could be in the Premier League next season, and they need to be ready for that opportunity. I'm just not sure that they're ready for it. And yes, people can throw back at me, but they will never know unless they're given the opportunity. I totally get it. Um, but what I don't want to do is is bring these kind of players in, and they're not ready. It has a negative impact. They sit on the bench. They don't get opportunities and get game time. Mm. So we're still in the same position what we are what we are now because. Are we are we in that position that luxury that we take a risk on a centre forward? I don't think we are in that in that position. A couple of more comments, uh, Anthony Cam has a couple of questions for you actually. One from Anthony: Where do you think we need to strengthen? Which positions? I think we need a centre forward. Yeah. I think we need somebody with experience who can lead that line. I think we need somebody who's got broad shoulders, who's not scared to miss chances, not scared to make mistakes. Um, I don't know who that person is, but I think it's got to come from either the Championship or the League, league, above, league above, or the equivalent. And it's got to be someone with experience who can drag a game and hold the ball up for us and get people into the game. We need more width for me. We need a little bit more creativity. I know we've obviously got some big players missing. Um, I, I look at, I watched Luton the other week and uh, I watched Giles against, I think it was Man City game, and it doesn't didn't didn't put balls in the box every week and again for Middlesbrough put mm. balls in the box. I think we we miss balls in the box. We miss causing issues, causing problems. Um, I'd like to see a wide player who just consistently puts crosses and crosses and crosses in the box. Because does Isaiah put enough crosses in the box on the right hand side? No, in my opinion, yeah. I think he does a lot of good work. But does he put goal, does he put balls in the box? If he does, does he put quality in the box? Not enough. Mm. Um, do we get enough quality from the left hand side? Not enough at the moment. No, not enough. So. The, the, we talk about not scoring enough goals. We, the centre forwards have been starved. You know, we've got, we've got, we talk about Josh Coburn. Josh would thrive on balls in the box, but he probably didn't score enough goals this season so far because he hasn't had the quality that players had last season. Um, do we create enough in the middle? 
No. Have we got the, the, the number 10 who can create a chance out of nothing to score goals? No. I mean, it's so obvious for us to say we're missing a Giles pinging that ball in yeah. uh, from, from wide positions, which, which Tuba absolutely yeah. feasted on last season. But we also seem to be missing that spark in midfield. Yeah. Just to break that in between midfield and, the line, and, yeah. and, 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 and the, uh, the strikers. Yeah. Because now it seems to be an awful lot of side-to-side -side passing yeah. and patient build-up, waiting for what's going to be an ideal opportunity. Yeah. It's almost as though we feel we can't create that opportunity. Yeah. We saw it with Hull, we saw it with Ipswich, yeah. certainly. Yeah. You know, they like possession, they like passing it side-to-side, -side, but as soon yeah. as they got into the borough half, they would then start probing and looking. Uh, Dave, there's a, there's a lot of teams who come to the Riverside who, um, who when they're broken between those lines, they've got past the, the Johnny Housens, got past the Hayden Hackneys, they've drove, they've run with the ball, they've excited their, their supporters, mm. have caused problems for us. Um, Dazelle did it for QPR. Um, uh, Chaplin did it the other day for Ipswich Town. Who's exciting us? Who's doing that for us? Who's driving at defenders? Mm. Who's making something happen? Riley Green's not there. We haven't got Archer anymore. We haven't got Ramsey anymore. We haven't got Tuba to do it from, from the 10 area. We haven't got the wide players who are doing it consistently anymore. We've still got Jones. Greenwood's not doing it enough. He's lacking a little bit of belief and a little bit of confidence in certain games. Mm. Um, Came off again last night. Yeah. Yep. He just lacks probably belief in himself. He can do it because he's shown he can do it. Yep. But can he do it week in, week out? You know what I mean? When he's on the pitch. That time can be that time got to happen because we need him in big 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 games. Last night was a big big game for us, and uh, for me a huge opportunity miss. But we need those kind of players to drive the standards. You've got the protection. You've got the Johnny Housens and the Hayden Hackneys play into them. But we need to then turn and drive and make something happen and play in between the the lines from the from their defence to midfield. We need to make things happen and create more chances. Question from uh, Mo Ibra. Uh, question to Andy Woods. Ali Al Hamadi be a good signing he's scoring goals he's scoring goals yeah and he's, and he's proved that he can do it at this level so I think I'm talking about levels and I, and I, and I didn't I don't want to come across negative about names and, and players you know what I mean I played low levels and, and, and I got opportunities I, I've known loads of players who've come from low levels and played up and, and, and made it to the very top but it doesn't happen for everybody and my only worry is that we hang our hat and put pressure on players who aren't ready right now uh, and given that opportunity and Al Hamadi he, he's a player who's done it and it would score goals that's an interesting point actually would you I mean would you almost would you talk in the same breath as a Hayden Hackney bearing in mind Tottenham are supposed to be uh, kept an eye on him in yeah. the last uh, handful of games he Tottenham played before Liverpool, injury yeah. Liverpool as well I mean, is that same risk for those boys, having a look at a Hackney, or has Hackney got to the point now where he's proved himself in the championship, yeah. so you see the quality naturally and you know almost 100% certain he will also transfer that into the Premier League? Or is it the same, is it the same gamble it's for a, It's the same risk. I just, I just think for Premier League teams, I think they've got a little bit more time on their hands. Would Hayden Hackney leaves and goes south to Liverpool in January. Would he get Would he get picked out of Middlesbrough and dropped into the Liverpool centre midfield straight away? No. He would earn his stripes, he would earn his, his plays, he would train, he would play alongside, he would improve as a player because he's training with better players, you would think. Mm. Um, he would play the odd game, he would get opportunities. Um, so the risk would probably be lesser because he's playing with better players on a bigger stage. Yeah. And his, his, his performance levels are already on a, on a high anyway from the level he's playing at now. Hayden's playing at a higher level than some of the lads are playing at in League One and League Two. So already he's got that. He's playing at under 21 level as well. Mm -hmm. So he's he's got that opportunity that he's already playing with some of the Liverpool players who are in midfield, for example, and some of the Spurs players. So it wouldn't be a risk because they can afford to take that risk as well financially, where Middlesbrough would potentially have to pay one, two, three million pounds for a centre forward even out of League Two. And yeah. it's a big risk if they're not going to score goals. Uh, it was an interesting one last night at the Six Medals when we were doing uh, Match Day Live. So just in case you haven't uh, picked it up yet, we do Match Day Live um, just before the Borough home game. So on a Saturday, we're in there three hours before kick off the Six Medals, uh, building up to the big game and, and talking to the Borough fans, having a chat with the away fans, getting their views. So join us. Join us at the Six Medals anytime you want. Uh, and on the midweek game, it's a couple of hours before kick off. We're in there. So, uh, yeah, get yourself the medals and, and join us. But there was a Liverpool fan in last night. Yeah. His family are all Borough fans. Was, he, got, was he lost? Yeah. <laughs> he got dragged kicking and screaming just about with the rest of his family to the Borough game last night. So I was, I was talking with uh, a couple of members of his family and somebody pointed and went, he's a Liverpool fan. Him. And he went, and he said straight away, I've got a question for you. Tell me, Hayden Hackney, is he as good as what we're hearing? 
So even that's now transferred onto yeah. the fans yeah, yeah. Uh, because there's talk, obviously, uh, in and around Anfield and Merseyside about them looking at Hackney. So he is catching the eye. Uh, listen, when you're when you're playing consistently well, um, scoring goals, your levels are, are consistent, you're playing for the under-21s. Um, and playing consistently well for the under-21s. Yeah, alongside some Liverpool players as well, by the way, because he's playing alongside players who are scoring goals in mm. the Premier League. So when you're mixing it and... Um, and probably those players are giving recommendations as well. Because listen, managers, clubs, players speak about other players. It happens all the time. Yeah, you know, what I mean, how what a better recommendation from a for a manager is a is f- from player to player because you, you players speak the honest truth about players, mm. um, opposition, and and, and 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 your own players. So it's um, yeah, I'm hoping he doesn't leave because it'll leave a huge yeah, hole, same. huge hole. Um, but if we were offered twenty million plus, it's a big number for us to turn down at the moment. As long as that money was invested back into Phil, um, with a number of players, I think it'd be a it would be a, a good business decision. Mm. It's just if it wasn't filled with fuller fuller numbers, it would cause a massive issue for me. Yeah, it would. Uh, back to a couple of points, uh, Ian. Uh, <laughs> thanks, mate. He's sticking up for me. Uh, Dave's lives matter, uh, guys. <laughs> leave him alone. Thanks. Um, do you have a leader on the pitch? You know, when, you, when you've got all these injuries at the moment, so there's an awful lot of people out. The question is, do we now, currently, have a leader on the pitch? Yeah, of course. Johnny Housen. Johnny Housen. Yeah, yeah Johnny's, Housen. Johnny's a leader. Johnny's a leader off the pitch, on the pitch. I think he's, he's got the full full respect. You know what I mean? Listen, I think I think it'd be nice to share the workload yep. and share that pressure um, with the Dale Fry, with the Lenehan, um, you know, with, with the Riley McGree, with the players who lead naturally. But, listen, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Players... Players lead in different ways. You know what I mean? We've still got those players around, by the way. Yep. Those players aren't not here anymore. They still turn up for games. They'll be in the changing room up to kick off. You know what I mean? They'll still be able to give advice to players, help players out. But when the players go on there, regardless what information you get from your managers, your coaches, your teammates, your friends, your family, the supporters, you've got to go out there and perform. You've got to go out there and put a shift in. You've got to go out there and play your own game. Yes, you're trying to use the tactics and you're going to try and implement things that the manager wants you to do, but you've got to just play the game and play the occasion. You'd won the game in terms of you got the early goal, you're dominating a football match, you're going at half-time, and for whatever reason, they came out on top, they, they created a few more chances than us, the, the tactics were a little bit better, they looked a little bit more organised on us, but that's that's also the players' responsibility along with the managers and coaches, you know, we've all mm. got to take a collective responsibility, and, um, and then the supporters on top of that sprinkled on top that we've, when we let a goal in, We've got to give 110 percent more to, in order to make sure that the fans know that we're behind them instead of mourning and groaning like we all do. Yeah, you know that we all got to collectively take that responsibility and hope that um, we all want that holy grail. We all want to get in the playoffs. We all want to win more football matches. We all want to see Aston Villa in the FA Cup. We mm. all want to see Fulham, Chelsea, Liverpool, uh, whoever it is in the semi-final of the Carabao Cup over two legs. So listen, it's not all doom and gloom. We've had a really tough week, um, three bad results, three bad defeats, but. Hopefully, come Saturday, we can get a little another, bit of positivity. Another test for Carrick, obviously. He's getting a few tests this, this yeah, year, isn't yeah. he, this season? Um, I've done Rye a disservice, our Rye, uh, because I only had uh, part of his message up. So um, I'll give you the full message. Uh, he said, I think he got it awfully wrong last night. We're talking Carrick. In my head, I'm thinking it has to be one of two things because there's no way he can truly believe it was a good performance. A, it's just protecting his players, but he got it wrong went too far and almost praised them for ineptitude which doesn't wash with fans at all strong word ineptitude right or B he's been learning from Mourinho and it's purely deflection Uh, trying to make the fans mad at him so not so much at the players they were the two options he thinks do you see either of those being more accurate yeah I think listen I think I think a manager's job is to deflect I think a manager's job is to deflect off players Um, what happens in the changing room stays in the changing room let's start First yeah. and foremost, that happens. You know what I mean? I've seen, I've seen some very heated um, arguments, fights, things get thrown around. There's fights. There's, there's all sorts happen. What you can imagine happening in the changing room after a defeat happens on a regular basis. But a manager will go out and speak to the media, speak to the press, and will hopefully deflect, and, and it will be his fault. And that's what happens. It's a part of football. And I think he knows that supporters aren't stupid, but. I think he also is trying to take the pressure off the players because he knows that the players are the ones who, at the minute, he hasn't got many options to change it for the weekend. Yeah. He knows that in a short space of time, in two days, 
he isn't going to get an extra player back. Yep. Um, so he needs to make sure that he protects players at all costs and make sure that they're nice and positive come Saturday because they're the most important part of a football club. Managers come and go, hmm. for, for the rightly or wrongly. Um, players are the most important players. That for people at a club, they're there for the long term and we have to make sure that they're right first and foremost come Saturday that we've got 11 strong players on the pitch with enough players that we need to probably turn things around for a, for a few positive subs but sometimes I think we just need to take a breath it's been a real bad week listen to me trying to be positive about three three defeats is impossible you know and, and we love the club we love the manager we love the chair well I love the chairman We hope, there's, not, there's not a lot of positivity about, about what we're doing we've turned things around dramatically it's just it's the worst roller coaster I think I've ever been on this season as a, as a middle fan for a long time because it's just it's, it's high and low there's no in between mm. there's no calming wait for the next up it's just up and down up and down up and down and and then with a big cup game coming up and a big league game coming up it's it doesn't look like it's going to change very very quickly like the teeth on a tenon <laughs> saw mate up and down yeah. up and down uh, there's a comment coming from tracy she's uh, asking a comment about the port fail game yeah but we've got swansea in between i don't know which you want to go with first let's go with tracy's comment thanks for sending us an interest she says port vale next tuesday night what would be your starting 11 um, I think depending on what happens on Saturday. Um, That's why I said I didn't know which way I to think go. Depending on what happens on Saturday, I think we can only take one game at a time. And if we had no game um, on Saturday, I think I'd mix it up a little bit. And I'd, and I would, but then we'd have a few more days to prepare. We'd have a few more days rest. It's going to be a difficult game on Saturday. It's going to be a real difficult game. They're potentially, we're going to waste a lot of energy on Saturday because we're going to be chasing the ball because they will keep the ball. Um, would I put Sammy Silvera in? Would I, would I freshen it up and give a little bit of pace? Potentially. Um, he has mixed things up in the cups previously, which has had a positive impact. Yeah. So would he go down that route? To be again? honest, the the club during our bad run in the league, mm. that was our lifeline. That was, was our it was lifeblood. It was, it was the only injection of positive we had. And players have players have responded really well. Mm. So will it happen again? I'm not sure. Sure. Will he will he t- will he make as many risks? I don't think he will. I don't think he'll change the goalkeeper. I don't think he'll put Glover in. I think he'll stick to his his core team now. I think it'll because. Okay. I don't think we've got that opportunity to, to take those many risks. You could toss. Uh, um, I was going to say Carlin Cup there. I'm going back a bit. No, I'm going back to the Cup, uh, Cup, Cup, Cup. Cup. You could toss a Carlin, uh, a Carabao Cup game to one side and just say it's not important. Yeah. But it's a quarter final. Yeah. Uh, where you, where you've got the technically other than barring the being at home, you've got the easier when well, you've got the easiest opponent as yeah. people would perceive it to play. Does that? How important does that then make that game? I think I agree with you. I think if it was one round earlier, I think it would become a game which we can take as many risks as you want and just put it put it to one side. And, and if we go through, brilliant. If we don't, does it matter? We're at that stage of, of a cup competition where we're two games away, well, three games away from Wembley, but mm. one's a semi-final of a two legs. So for me, it becomes a massive importance because we're going to play a Premier League side home and away. It could be a local one against Newcastle, mm-hmm. which makes it massive. Um, yeah. What I don't want to do is lose to Port Vale and regret playing Newcastle over two legs or playing a Fulham over two legs where we possibly we could potentially get a, a West Ham or we can get a positive result and get to, get to Wembley you know I don't want to ruin this opportunity of a major major trophy at Wembley we won the trophy at the Millennium Stadium which was fantastic it was a yeah, great yeah. event yeah I was there great event great day um, and I was playing for Cardiff at the time it made it even more even, even more special but there's something even more special about seeing seeing them at Wembley and mm. doing it at Wembley and hopefully having a having a positive impact because I've been there every time at Wembley when we've been there and I've cried every time as a player and as a and as a supporter so I, I want to hopefully see some one, mate? yeah no, no, but I, I want to see I want to see some positivity at Wembley for for Middlesbrough and I hope um, listen we're not going to get a better chance this year mm. because we've had Huddersfield Bolton Bradford Exeter Port Vale it doesn't come any any better than that it you know doesn't, I mean? I'm not going to call it easy because no game's easy you can only beat what's in front of you but it doesn't come any better. So, OK, we've got Swansea beforehand. I don't think he's got many options no. uh, in, in the, the starting eleven no. for Swansea. We're not going to see new faces back. We're not going to see new faces back for the Port Vale game. But I suppose he does have that fear. And I'm sure he's been thinking this in the last handful of games when he looks at the bench and thinks, I've got to try and make a change here, but do I risk people? Do I risk more injuries? So... I suppose his hands are tied to a certain extent on Saturday. Yeah, well, 100%. And I think you look at the change yesterday, Clark coming out, Vanderberg going in, 
was there too many games in a short space of time? Is is will he will he he's bring, been out for fourteen months? Will he bring Clark back in and play him Saturday to Saturday, or will he will he is the plan to play him against right, Port Vale like on, on Wednesday? So do he I. Looks good. So do I. Um, will he will he mix things up and change his formation and play a back three? Yeah, there's, there's loads of things that he could do. There's loads Any of chance he'd he might leave not. Dale out? I don't think so. I don't think he can. For me, Dale's Rolls Royce. I think Dale's at an age and a, and, a, and a level of his of his footballing journey that he could should be able to play week mm. in week out, game after game. And even when he's playing badly, making mistakes, it's because he's he's trying to do the right thing. But sometimes those mistakes happen. But he's never had that consistent partner alongside yeah. him where where he makes him. You know, what I mean, when I, I seen which I, can be critical, can huge, you? Mo- yeah. Mowbray Pallister. Yeah, huge. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I remember Adams ball. Remember Dale when uh, we played Sunderland last year and we beat them one 0 Matt Clark's first game. Um, him and Clark alongside each other were, were, were immense, but they mm. haven't had enough time to forge a relationship. Dale and uh, Van der Berg haven't had enough time to forge a relationship. Dale and Lenehan did okay, yeah. but we shipped a lot of goals in we lost a lot of games so it's was it was it those two together was it you know, I mean there's, there's, there's loads of in- interpretations we can look at but you need the right people in the right places and the run that we went on the positive run we had the similar spine of the team we had the goalkeeper the same two centre halves midfield centre forward so we probably need to get back to a little bit of consistency um, the two ga- the next two games are huge huge they don't get any bigger for this football club I don't think this it season. sounds strange doesn't it saying a cup yeah. game against Port Vale is huge yeah. but it is yeah. it is get get through the semi-finals suddenly it could just give you that bit of self-belief it could change, it could change the season Dave this, this week even if we got the semi-final the Premier League team put up a decent performance yeah. you think hey, well, yeah. we are okay we've we given, them, we've given them a good go yeah. you know and I look at years gone by you know there's, there's there's an opportunity to get to Wembley here and this is the opportunity you know I'm not talking about winning the cup I'm talking about getting to Wembley and we're one Premier League game and one t- one game against a lower side away from going to Wembley. That, that's a huge opportunity that you you can't give up. Mm. You can't give up, and you got to, you beat Port Vale, you're going to get a sell out of the Riverside. You're going to, it's going to be a TV game. You're going to go go away from home to to a Premier League game. They're, they're the games that the players want to play in. And it would be they're magnificent to have Michael Wilson managing. Away. But oh, there you go. Well. I'd rather have that in the final. We'll keep that one for the final. Yeah. Um, our, our, our Aussie our Aussie guru, the ledge. From Australia uh, has been back on. He said he's been doing his stats, so uh, he he thinks this stat is quite telling. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, even though cinnamon latte caramel lath is banging them in, <laughs> games where Josh has started. Yeah. This is our record: won seven. Yeah. Drawn one, lost one. Games when Josh hasn't started, won one, drawn two, lost nine. Yeah. Can you read into them? Josh gives us a little bit of a different dimension to play. He he's better with the ball, better hold up player. Um, he gives us more of an outlet, takes pressure off defenders. Um, Latte Lath, a little bit more direct. Doesn't keep hold of the ball as well. Um, plays in a different way. Um, so obviously that has an impact. You can also look at the injuries right now. It's mm-hmm. having an impact. Um, at the start of the season, when um, when Josh wasn't playing, we lost a lot of games. So. I think we can only focus on here and now. I think a lot of the games which we lost at the start of the season, which Josh didn't play until he started started getting getting his his regular game time as a starter. But now the last three is worrying. Um, do we need to change it? But what I'm hearing is I'm not sure Josh will be fit. I'm not sure that it's uh, that it's his, his injury is going to clear up very quickly overnight. So we need to be very careful of what we wish for because what we don't want to do here is is risk a player and put get the, get them back and put them out for two, three, four weeks minimum, mm. you know what I mean? Because then they missed the whole Christmas period. Um, if the manager's looking at it and looking at it in a in a in a fortnight or looking at it gamely or weekly, um, then I think I'm sure the plan will be to get him back in the side or get him back into the squad as soon as he possibly can. But he's got to be fit. Same as everybody else. Mm. Just looking to see if there's any more comments coming before we disappear. Uh good night everyone. This is Ian. Um good night everyone watching. Good to chat. Uh, as normal uh, got the rest of the week to much. have a great rest of the week uh, looks forward to the next live stream so thank you for that Ian very nice words mate we're done and dusted um, I suppose I'm going to just give you this dilemma to answer it's probably very unfair of me if you could only win one of the next two games oh. which would it be I probably uh, Both I, I nearly, I nearly said yeah, I nearly no I nearly said I nearly I nearly went ag- went across the grain and said about um, I've said how important the cup game is the impo- the, the the league's important because we can't afford to, to fall too too many games behind and points behind but the cup's a one off opportunity so we have to win the cup we have to win the cup game to get where we are I risk losing the league game but then win 
further games throughout the season. Just you lose because the cup can give you that injection of self-belief, can, positivity, yeah. and, there's a bigger picture. and you win more league games there's a big, after. There's a bigger picture, yeah, Okay. in that one. Cracky, mate. Good to have you in. Great question. As always. Yeah, Na- yeah, nightmare yeah. as well. well nightmare there question. There that's your job. Um, I think that's it. We're done and dusted, mate. Loved so it. I'll catch you, uh, are you... Are you in next Thursday? We're getting close to Christmas. Yeah, in next Thursday, yeah. Oh, good man. Okay, that's yeah. great stuff. Cracky, uh, don't forget your comments next week, and don't forget the North East Footy Breakfast Show back in the morning, 7 till 9, on the red... Um, right across Teesside on DAB Radio and Darlow and Aircliffe and Bishop Auckland. We'll get to Stockton soon when the government switch the transmitters on for Stockton. Uh, but also you can catch us, smart speakers, online, all that sort of stuff. And we'll catch you then. On DAB Radio, online and smart speakers. This is the radio.